life's greatest questions. So, uh, she was the father and our sufficiency, we ended that. So we want to go to another one, very important. Um, that one has to do with, is anything too hard for the Lord? One of the greatest questions asked in the scriptures is this particular one we want to start now. This one is taken from Genesis 18.14. This question came from Genesis 18.14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. You want to ask yourself as you sit down here today, do you believe there is anything that is so hard for the Lord? I looked through some other uh, biblical interpretations or other versions of the scriptures. Um, new Kim James Version and New International Version put it this way. Is anything too hard for the Lord? New American Standard Bible put it this way. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Is there anything in life that is so difficult for God? And International Standard Version put it this way. Is anything impossible for the Lord? No, let us think in our heart and uh, reason with this. Actually speaking, look at your life. Look at the beginning where you started, where you started to understand any issue about life. Look at the environment, things around you. Look at the up and down, the mountain top, the valley of our lives, our destinies. What we have faced in life, what we have overcome, time of challenges, you know, time of storm, time of need, time of plenty, all those things. Prayers, sometimes you pray to God, you desire this thing, and the answer will be no. And sometimes you pray and pray, you waited and waited and waited for the Lord. It seems as if God is not there. And there were some occasions you pray and God just grant, granted you the answer. Also, with all this up and down, valley and mountain top, good and bad of life, have you at any time in your life come to this conclusion, that this question, that came to Abraham and his wife, Sarah. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Let's, let's, uh, you know, we're going to take time to, this is going to be a subtopic or sub, uh, subtopic on that, the life greatest questions. And so that subtitle is, is anything too hard for the Lord? I want to stay on that. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I'm using the New King James Version uh, explanation. And if you like, we can also take it as International Standard Version. Is anything impossible for the Lord? Let us check some parallels or what we call cross uh, references in the scriptures. Cross references in the scriptures. So when you study the Bible, there are some verses that you can, uh, you can also check that questions like this or things like this or stories that you have read or things like that may occur and then you want to you know cross examine them we call that cross references jeremiah 32 verse 27 he said behold i am the lord the god of all flesh is there anything too hard for me so jeremiah 32 verse 17 again the same chapter, but verse 17 says, Ha, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the heart by your great power and outstretched harm. There is nothing too hard for you. That won't give the answer. So let's look at the answer based on the scriptures. Let's look at the answers based on the scriptures on this 
title today. This is part one. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Job 42 verse 2 gave answer. I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. There is nothing that God said his heart to do or his mind to do that anyone can change. He cannot withheld. Once he said he's going to do something, he will do it. So whatever you are passing through, whatever you are facing, and it seems as if you have the same challenge that Abraham and his wife had here, and the kind of thing that what God is saying, God is joking. And they laugh at God. Maybe there's an issue in your life that you also laugh. When God told you something, something dropped in your heart, maybe you are listening to God's word, and something dropped into your heart as to what God is going to do, and you just laugh. You laugh at God. Like Sarah did. Abraham did the same thing. In that chapter 17, we go to see of Genesis. Abraham did his own laughter. Then chapter 18, Sarah did his own laughter in her mind. So we go to see that as we continue. Matthew 19, verse 26. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men, this is impossible. For with God, all things are possible. Tell somebody with God, all things are possible. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Whatever we are facing, whatever challenges we have, whatever needs that we have in our lives, with God, all things are possible. With God, nothing has ever gone out of hand. With God. Whatever is the situation, whatever we are facing, whatever is that particular need, whatever is the problem, whatever is the storm, either in marriage, either in business, either in, in our health, either in, um, in certain issue of life or whatever, nothing is impossible with God. Look, 1 verse 37. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing will be impossible. So one very good thing about God is that he's alive forevermore. God is constant. Human being can change. Anything can change. Weather can change. Look at the weather we have today now. You wait till Tuesday. You wait till Tuesday. It's going to be below zero on Tuesday. Yes. I mean Fahrenheit. I don't, I'm not talking of centigrade now. It's going to be below zero. Yeah. It's going to be maybe in the 20s. But today it's about 40. So, so some people can even go out like this. I've seen people walking, you know, when it is 40, they walk like we're in summer. Some will have mini skirt. When it is 40, let them go and try it from Tuesday. So, but you see, weather can change, situation can change, men can change, but God is constant. God is the, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, Romans 4, verse 21. Romans 4, 21. Romans chapter 4, verse 21. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able, he was also able to perform what he has promised. So if God, if God promised something, God is able to perform whatever he has promised. So what do you think is the first biblical question in the Bible? The first, when you look at the scriptures, you read, what do you think is the first biblical question? So one of the first questions in the Bible. I tried to peruse it and I saw that no, the first biblical question in the scriptures came from Satan. As, as, as I look, there may be some paraphrase questions, but the real question came from, and let's look at that. Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden, did God tell you that? It was a question of deception. 
question of deceit, question of failure, question of confusion. But then the first question that we can say, like we said, God asks now, was a question of reconciliation, question of love, question of hope. And look at that, question of pursuit of God. If you look at that same chapter 3 of Genesis, look at verse 8. And they had the son of the Lord God walking in the garden in the school of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where art thou? Because they have done something wrong, they knew. They were hiding. And God was pursuing them. God will always pursue his people. No matter where you are, no matter what you have done wrong, don't go away from God. Because God is good. Look at God here. They did something wrong. They would deceive them. Satan deceived the, our parents. And they were hiding. But God was looking for them. No matter the storm that you are passing through, God is always with you. Even in the midst of storm, God is there with you. Amen? Look at the three Hebrews thrown into the furnace. God was there. They got somebody said there was someone who looked like the son of God. Is, you know, we, took, we threw three people. Now behold, Nebuchadnezzar, we got uh, four people. Because God went with these Hebrews into the lake of fire. God was looking for us. God was seeking our goodness. He was very faithful. God is looking for our success. God is looking for, you know, our victory. God is a good God. Even with all that happened to Abraham, God promised him, you know, he was about 75 years old when God asked him to move out from his place and then go to somewhere I'm going to show you. And he was having up and down, this and that. And then when he was almost 100 years old, God came back to him and said, you know, you go to do this. That was why he laughed. You came to me the first time. You changed my name from Abraham to Abraham. When I was like 75. Now, 25 years later, all your talk, 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 talk did not come to pass. Now you have come again. Then he laughed at God. Sometimes there will be situations in our life that may make us to laugh at God. But it is not the best thing. Being that God is so good, look at what God did to our parents here. After they had sinned, God was pursuing them. Things may make you to hide from God, things may, but there is nowhere else you should go. No one else can be like God to us. There was a case in the scriptures in, uh, in John chapter 6. Jesus was talking, he was eating the people hard, he was talking to them, and disciples began to leave him. The disciples began to leave him. People began to leave him. You know, he was telling them, my flesh is food indeed, my blood is that, it's, you know, I will, I will do this, I will, you will drink my flesh, you drink my blood. You said, I, I, what, what kind of things did Jesus, who is going to drink your blood? Who is going to eat your flesh? They were confused. They keep telling them, it's like telling them, this is going to be hard, this is going to be challenging, there will be challenges along the way. People don't want to hear that. You know, most pastors that will be preaching to people, oh, there are challenges, it's going to come. People will not like to go to that kind of a place. They won't want to go to tell them, hey, look, when you raise up one, one of your legs, and dollars will flow. Hmm. You know, I was just joking with someone in the office. He said, he needs money. I said, oh, you need money? Oh, good, good. Go to your, go to ATM, go and withdraw $1,000. Bring it to me, let me pray and double it to to 2000. Say, no, 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 no. You guys will first give me the money. No, 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 no. I can't first give you the money. Give shall be given unto you. Go, okay. I mean, how much you need? Say, as much as possible. Okay. Go and get me $10,000. I will pray, turn it to 20000 He said, I'm trying to become the hosting. I said, what do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, he was saying that. Because people like when they Tell them some things that will bring some instant, you know, uh, drive-through solution. Jesus here was eating them hard with reality of life. He was eating them, was, was telling them. And then in verse of that chapter, chapter 6, verse, um, look at verse um, 
16. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they had this said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? And then it, let's jump to verse uh, 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then, then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? Many of the disciples were going back. They were going because the word was hard. Reality. Sometimes you tell some people reality, you become their enemies. When, when, when siblings, when they go to somewhere and they discuss and it's hard, they may just, you know, scatter the relationship. Because people don't want something that is hard. They, some people don't want the truth. But Jesus was telling them the truth. And so, verse 67, then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? These are the apostles. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. No matter what we are facing, do not let us go away from the Lord. Serving the Lord is a great privilege. Your relationship with God, nothing should make, make you doubt that relationship. Stay with the Lord. Stay with Jesus Christ. No matter the storm you are passing through, stay with him. Because he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. There is no way anyone can come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Stay with the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what you are passing through right now, he will eventually take care of you. Amen. Because with God, nothing is impossible. There is nothing that is too hard for the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's, let's, let's continue. Um, what brought about this question in Genesis 18 verse 14? What brought about, don't forget we are treating the life greatest questions and we have this subtopic or subtitle, is anything too hard for the Lord? What brought about this question? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have his son. Genesis 18, 14. Let's quickly look at the call of Abraham. And then, uh, you know, I will just stop when I feel we should finish this part, and then we continue next Sunday. Let's look at the call of Abraham. If you read from Genesis chapter 12, you see when it was called. Now the Lord said to Abraham, it was Abraham then, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Iran. How old was Abraham? Imagine God waited from day one he was born. God waited until he was 75, past retirement. Most, time, most people retire now 65, right? When you can continue to tap your social security or Medicare or whatever, 65. God waited 10 years after 65. When he's supposed to have retired, God said, yeah, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you that, move, go this, go that, and he started moving. He left where he was brought up. He left where he was brought up. Historian of, you know, uh, theologian said, you know, Abraham grew up with his father, and the father was a pagan in the, one of the cities in Babylon, the Babylonian city, and the environment was so corrupt, and he started moving. And God told him, you have to leave this place and go to where I, I will show you. Now, look, look at it very carefully. If you look at verse 5, Then Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. 
So they came to the land of Canaan. So they got to the land right there. Abraham passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the uh, ter uh, Terebit, tree of Moray, and Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your descendant, I will give this land, this land of Canaan, I'm going to give to your descendant. And that was why when they were arguing with the Jews and the prime minister came to a meeting, I think in White House, and the people are asking questions, they want the sea of old. That, you know, you, you, you these Jews, you took over, you, you know, some press people had some funny questions. You took over this land, you, you drove away uh, the, the Palestinians, you know, it's, where is the where is the sea of old? And the prime ministers told them, "Our sea of old is the Bible, because you can see this place where God said, i 'I'm going to give you this land. This land, Abraham. This land you pass through, Abraham. I'm going to give it to you, land of Canaan. Okay. Let's continue. Look at verse eight. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel and Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abraham journeyed, going on, going on still toward the south. Now let's get to a place that is very, very important. Look at verse 10. Now there was a famine in the land, a trouble, no food, nothing. And Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. This is this is one of the main reasons for immigration in the world. One of the main reasons for immigration in the world is when there's a trouble, people cannot get food, they want no comfort, they move to a place where, where they can get comfort. Amen? And any country who fail to embrace immigrants, we always have problems at the end. You fail to embrace immigrants, you're going to have problems at the end. Because it's in the Bible. Even the one God promised, Abraham, God promised him. The land, the same land God said, I'm going to give to you that area, area of that land, they got a problem. Where did they go? They went to Africa, Egypt, look for food. And Abraham told his wife, because of time, he said, look, you are so beautiful. You are very, very beautiful. I'm going to tell these Egyptians that you are my sister. Because if I tell them you are my wife, they're going to kill me and get you. Because we are so pretty. So the wife agreed. Hello. This is a man that God promised. This is a man that had a covenant with God. This is a man God loved. Some of us will be thinking that because you are a Christian, you are not going to face problems. You know, as some can tell you, you are a Christian. Each time they ask me, people ask me, you know, we had a uh, Where are you from? I said, from Nigeria. Why, why are you here? It's cold here. I told yeah, I want, I'm, I'm here for a better life. I, I don't have to lie. I'm here for what? And that is God's promise for me, or that is God's purpose for me. We got to move around. Man cannot be static. So it's not a sin for me to come here. Hello? Because there are also some Americans in Nigeria. Amen. There are some Chinese. Where? Nigeria. There are some British. Where? So is it a sin for Nigerians to be in Britain or to be in America? No. If you are doubting, go to the scriptures and check very well. Abraham had immigration problem. And it was someone God had chosen. Someone God promised. Some of us, we think because we are Christian, we are not going to have challenges. We are not going to have problems. No. You're making a mistake. Because God has to prepare you for where he's taking you to. Good preparation will enhance good performance. God wants you to perform very well. So he will prepare you. If God fails to prepare you and just throw you into, into that promise, you will, you will melt. Amen? You will do what? So, but God will always intervene for his people. So Abraham did that. So his wife, they, they, uh, they did exactly what they said, they told, Abraham told them, this is my sister. You want to take her, do what? But what happened to God? Let's read verse 17. Okay, let's first, let, okay, let's first read verse 14. So, I'm going to stop so we can enjoy this series. You're going to enjoy this series. Let me ask you, ask somebody, is there anything very hard for the Lord? So, so what is it that you are passing through you think God cannot help? 
Is anything so impossible for God? Nothing is impossible for God. If he created heaven and heart, if he created all these things just with the power of God, there is nothing you are passing through right now God cannot resolve. There is nothing you are passing through that God cannot resolve. There is no situation that has gone beyond the power of God. Don't exaggerate your problem and make it bigger than the God we have. Our God is bigger than any mountain of trouble. It's bigger than any mountain. It's not because I'm standing here preaching with the preachers to say that, but I'm telling you what I've read. I'm also telling you what, I have, what has happened to me personally. God is a good God. So look at verse 14. So it was when Abraham came to Egypt that, he, that the Egyptians saw the woman that she was very beautiful. What happened to Sarai? Very beautiful. So the princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. This is beautiful. Hey, Pharaoh, because they also want what? They want favor. So they went to the king. We got you another very beautiful woman. And king of that time, king of that time, they, they can do anything. Nobody can challenge them. That was what some lawmakers were telling Donald Trump. They said, Mr. Donald Trump, you are a president of the United States. You are not a king. Because you are a president, you are not above the law. But king is what? King is above the law. That was why God warned, God warned the Israelites when they said they want a king to rule over them. God warned them. You think I'm not better? When you get a king to rule over you, they said they want to be like other nations. Oh, it's going to do this, going to do that, it's going to take your wife. You know, king, if king, if I'm king now, if I'm king, and I see you with any beautiful woman, I will just tell one of the ushers, one of the ministers, go gather that woman for me. Hello? I will say what? Go get, either she's pregnant, she's not pregnant, go get that woman for me. Hello? <laughs> and because I'm king, you can ask, you can question me. You can question, you can question the king. You know the Yoruba, they call it one name. They call that, uh, that name. Uh, uh, no, uh, 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 you can ask the king. The king is saying, he put leg on your daughter or put leg on your wife. We are talking. He will put leg on you. If you make noise. That is king. God warned the Israelites, don't have kings. Because kings, they will take everything you got. You look at what happened to, 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 to Job, I mean to uh, 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 Saul. Look at what happened to David. Look at what happened to Solomon. How can you have access to 1,000 women? For God's sake. Calculate it per year. Calculate, divide it. And see, uh, 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 God have mercy. So, the princes, they went to Pharaoh. We got you a beautiful woman. Pharaoh, uh, go bring her. Bring her. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. Verse 16. He treated Abraham well for her sake. Oh, this treat treat a brother very well for me because I got a beautiful one here. Not knowing that he was playing with what? Fire. The Lord will intervene on your behalf. The God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob will intervene on your behalf. Anything that belongs to you that the oppressor has tried to take, the Almighty God will arise on your behalf and fight your cause. Even when you are powerless, it will be your power. God rose up for Abraham. God rose up for Abraham. God has been a God of intervention. He has been intervening on our behalf. We may not even know. Abraham was powerless. He was an immigrant. He was looking for food. He was so powerless. What, what, is, what, what can he say? If he mess up, because he's a foreigner in that place, if he mess up, they're going to mess, they will kill him. So, what happened? He had, he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys and camels. They gave him anything he wants. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues, plagues because of Sarai. Sickness, disease, Sarai, Abraham's wife. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, what is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? 
why did you say she is my sister? I might have taken her as my wife. Now, therefore, here is your wife. Take her and go your way. Because Pharaoh knew that if he had taken that woman as his wife, he may die. Because you cannot lay hands on fire. <laughs> you can't lay hands on fire and it's not going to burn you. You know, the king of that time, they are not like today. Some people today, once they see a woman, they'll be shaking like this. They got so many women. Uh, uh, the, priest, the priest said, we got a brief woman. Go bring her in, bring her in. Give her a shallot there. You know, begin to prepare her. Begin to prepare her. Maybe it's going to take a month to prepare her before he can go to bed with the king. We don't know how many it's going to, how long it's going to take, but they have to do what? Prepare her. They will go and do all the shakes. All the shakes, they will shake about her and everything. They were still doing the shake. God intervened. And God dealt with them. Sickness, problems. And Pharaoh said, Go, Abraham, Abraham, why did you lie to me that this, this is your sister? Oh, I will have laid my hands on her. Now take, take her and go. Take her and go. And he was sent away. The Bible recorded in verse 20, so Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. See, the story of Abraham will not be able to go through. The, maybe in part two, I will take you through this short story. That he came from the Senate of, of Seth. You know, Noah was from Seth, and after God destroyed the, the first generation because of flood and everything, um, Noah now has had a son, Shem. And Shem, another man, and, and Shem, uh, Abraham came from Shem. Because God was fulfilling the promise he promised in Genesis chapter 3, um, verse 15, that he's going to you know, uh, make the woman that devil deceit, the deceived to bruise, that the son of that woman will bruise the head of that serpent. And God was providing salvation for us through that means. And that promise will come to Abraham. So if you continue to journey and you go through, if, if, before you come in the next, uh, next Sunday, we go to part, part two of is anything so difficult for the Lord or anything too hard for the Lord. You please read chapter 17 and chapter 18 of Genesis. We're going to go through all that because of our time today. We will not be able to go through everything. But if you read from uh, chapter uh, 17, you see where Abraham, where Abraham loved. And when you go to chapter 18, you see where Sarah loved. And you see the reason why they loved because, you know, they thought that how can this be? How can this be fulfilled after they were of that age? He was 75 years old when God promised him. Now, God returned in chapter 17 why he was almost 100 years old. And in chapter 18, the, the, the Lord now said he's going to bring the promise to pass that in a year after that, Abraham's wife, Sarah, we had a son. And they wouldn't want to believe that. Not that they don't believe, but it seems as if it's hard for anybody to believe that a woman of that age will have a son, uh, almost uh, about 90 years old, that we have a son. But the Bible recorded that at finally, if you read, I want to read that one, then we're going to pray, and we'll continue later. Uh, if you read uh, Genesis, open the scripture to Genesis with me. I want to read to you where God eventually fulfilled that promise. Genesis chapter 21, if you read from verse 1, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bore Abraham his son in his old age. At the set time of which God had spoken to, to him. Abraham was about 100 years old then, and I think Sarah was about 90. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Isaac. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Those of us that we think we are too old or that our age is past, according to science, that God cannot still bring something out of us. The Bible says it's the same today, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same. What he promised to do, that he can do also. It's never too late for God. You may be 90 years old, you may be 100 years old, you may be 70 years old, you may be 60 years old, you may be 50 years old. If God said he's going to do something for you, 
God will make everything beautiful in his time. Just continue to anchor yourself on God. Paul said, I mean, uh, Peter said, there's nowhere else we can go. You have the word of life. Whatever situation you may be right now, there is no one else who can treat you like Jesus. There's no one else who can treat you like God will treat you. There's no one else who can be your best friend like Jesus. So let's continue to keep our hope in the Lord. Faith is the key to have favor from the Lord. Faith is the key to receive miracles from the Lord. Faith is the key to get victory from the Lord. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let's continue to build our faith in the Lord. Let's continue to trust the Lord. If we put our trust in the Lord, we will not be put to shame. In any situation of life, continue to put your trust in the Lord. Continue to trust the Lord. Don't trust in what you see. Trust in the Lord. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Because we are not seeing it, because we cannot see it clearly, does not mean that God cannot do it. God can see beyond what we can see. God can do more than what we can do. It's not a man that he could lie. It's not a son of man that he could repent. What he said he will do, that he will do. Even in your life. You don't say, oh, he has done it in the past. He did it for those people. This is a different time. He cannot do it right now. God can still do it today. Because it's the same yesterday. It's the same today. God is the same forever. Father, we bless you. We thank you. Because with you, nothing has ever turned out of hand. We thank you for what we are reading today about Abraham. We thank you for your promises for him. We thank you for Sarah. We thank you for everything that you have done in the life of these, your children, as you have made them to be a model of what we can, we can take as an example for us today. What you have done for them, you can do it for us also. Because you are the same yesterday, you are the same today, you remain the same forever. Thank you, precious Father. Our trust that we are placed in you, Father, we pray, we pray, oh God, shall not be dashed. Our hope in you shall not be dashed. And as we continue to depend on you, we pray, oh Lord Jesus Christ, that we shall not be put to shame. Thank you, precious Lord. Glory be to your name, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.